Hey everybody, Tim here with today's review of Star Trek. We got the 12th movie, Into Darkness. This movie was rough. Like, it was really bad for me, personally. Like, it was a really difficult time to get through it, and I absolutely hated it. So, I mean, that's just, boom, right off the top. That's how I feel about this movie. So, just like all of my other reviews, I'm going to start from the top, work my way down, and kind of talk about all of the different points and why I think about, like, the different stuff that's going on. For one, so I don't like even the title, Star Trek Into Darkness, I'm not digging it. So there's always been the long, like, it's kind of a joke. It's not even a rumor or a myth or anything. It's more of a joke that the even-numbered movies of Star Trek are good and the odd-numbered movies of Star Trek are bad. And, I mean, that goes all the way back to the beginning where the motion picture was bad, the Wrath of Khan was good, the search for Spock was bad, the voyage home was good so on and so forth, I, I didn't like this movie. And I remember, so my husband and I first got together in 2011. Now, the first movie, like, for the Kelvin universe came out in 2009, before we got together. Now, like, at this point, 11, 12, so we'd been together about two years, and obviously I'm really into Star Trek, so I was like, let's go see this movie. Like, and even as we're watching it, I was like, please, like, can, let Let's stop. Let's leave. Like, like, let's leave the theater. I didn't. I managed to sit there and power my way uh, through the movie, but it was it was rough. Like, there were actually parts of this movie where I was like, you know what? No, I'm done. Let's just go. But we didn't. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to kind of start at the top, go down. From the very beginning, the opening sequence is great. Now, I've said before, I'm not a big fan of J.J. Abrams. Just personally, I'm not. I think he's really good at concepts, but I think he he's not very good at execution. Um, to be honest with you, that's also how I feel about like George Lucas. Like, um, great at coming up with ideas, bad about actually putting those into film. So, and with J.J. Abrams, he's like his movies look great. Like, if I put this movie on mute and just sat back and looked at it, it's gorgeous. Like, it's so well done. I, I just, it's the storytelling that loses me. From the whole beginning sequence of like Kirk and doing like the, the volcano and stuff, it's an interesting teaser. It's an interesting opening. I get it. Whatever. Like, but the, the whole prime directive where Spock is quoting, like, you can't let them see the starship because it violates the prime directive. Okay, you guys are changing, like, the entire course of this, like, species life by changing this volcano. So, who cares about the Prime Directive at this point? And I was happy that they bring that up later on. But to see Spock in the volcano was great. To see the Enterprise in the ocean was really interesting. I did like stuff like that. Spock's line, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, no. Stop it. It's overused. I don't like it. Just stop. Like, the original Spock saying it in The Wrath of Khan, I get it. It was brilliant, and it, it paved the course. Tuvok said it one time in Voyager. It was perfect. It was a perfect moment. It worked. To Paul, like, just randomly threw it out there. She's like, there's an ancient Vulcan proverb for this. And it's like, why? Why are you just like, now it's just common. Like, you're, you're diluting it. The way they used it in this, again, they just kind of diluted it. It's so overused. Watching the, the Enterprise come out of the water was brilliant. Like, it was so well filmed. I really liked it. And then the natives worshipping the Enterprise was actually funny. It was interesting. And it's it's something we've seen before in Star Trek. Even going back to the original series where, like, the the whole society based their their society uh off of the the gangsters book so stuff like that or like the what is it the phaser or the communicator it was the communicator and enterprise stuff like that so stuff it's interesting we we don't necessarily need it but it was a good teaser benedict cumberbatch makes his appearance i remember i mean it's been a long time since this movie came out I, I remember people were talking about it forever. Like, is he con? Who is he? Is it go who's it going to be? 
I had not seen Sherlock at this point, and I don't think I'd actually seen Benedict Cumberbatch in anything. So this was my first like introduction to that actor. And I was like, meh, like, I mean, he's okay. Like he's way over the top. And then I saw Sherlock and I was like, oh, this is great. And then of course now he's done Doctor Strange and he's done a bunch of other stuff. And I was like, okay, now I appreciate this actor. Going back and re-watching this movie, now that I've seen all the other stuff, like, ugh, it's still kind of rough. Like, it's still not that great. He's a terrific actor. That doesn't mean he was cast in the right role. I mean, that that is what it is, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but, to, like, his whole character is really kind of interesting. I liked when Kirk and Spock go see Captain Pike. They're in gray uniforms, which is kind of a reference to the first Star Trek motion picture where they wore like the gray pajama pants. So stuff like that I liked. The, the whole conversation where the rules don't apply to you. You've like just gotten by with blind luck because you've had no casualties and all sorts of other stuff like that. I love that whole scene where we just see Pike laying into him. And he's like, you know what? Admiral Marcus is taking the Enterprise from you. And me, who's like seen all the other movies, I'm like, ooh, Carol Marcus, Admiral Marcus, I get it. So I was like, instantly, I was in it. I was like, okay, this is great. But they took the Enterprise away. Now, I said this before, I understand this is a different timeline. I understand it's different than the original series. But in the original series, Robert April, Captain Pike, and then Kirk became the captain. For this one, it's basically just been Kirk for the most part. And so I was like, ugh, like, okay, they took it away. Who cares? Like, so I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble with it. So uh, we, oh God, I have so many notes. Uh, the, the, when we finally see Khan, or Khan, sorry, Benedict Cumberbatch's character, who is so far unnamed, taking the blood out of himself giving it to this guy because his daughter presumably has cancer of some sort. And then he kills himself because only Benedict Cumberbatch can cure her. I was like, okay, once again, I'm interested. Like, where's it going? Like, I'm kind of curious. So Captain Pike is now, he, he even says to Kirk, he's like, they gave the Enterprise back to me. What does that mean? Because they, they say Spock is going to a different ship Kirk is now going to be the second in command. He's going to be underneath Pike. He's going to be the first officer. But so is Pike, did Pike get knocked down from Admiral to Captain? Because I'm pretty sure they said Admiral Pike earlier on. So I, I don't know. Like is Pike and Kirk peers at one point? It's kind of awkward. And again, it's just bad storytelling. Like nobody knows what's going on. So at this point, we finally realize that we see Admiral Marcus, played by the amazing Peter Weller. Now, I'm, I'm binging all of Star Trek so quickly. I just saw Peter Weller two days ago in Enterprise, but now he's playing Admiral Marcus. It's great. RoboCop, the voice of Batman. It's amazing. And now we know that Jonathan Harris is who Benedict Cumberbatch's character is. Nobody believes that. Nobody believes that for a second. And I was just like, why? Why even come up with this whole fake plot? It's so bad and it's unneeded. And it's just like drawing out the, the, the whole story. So, and I, I love how Kirk is the one that kind of puts it together. So, when you watch Star Trek, the original series... And then through the, pic, the, the, the movies and then going into the next generation is where they start to become more like of a military procedure. And that's where you get like the jokes about data and stuff. How the captain and the first officer cannot be together on an away mission. Why? Because if they both die, who's in charge? So, and that makes sense. Like, it's like, okay, like I live in America, obviously. The, the president and the vice president cannot both be on like... Air Force One. Why? Because if the plane crashes, we got to go to the third in command. So stuff like that. It makes sense. Like, it's like, okay, I get you. I see where you're coming from. Kirk is the one that's like, you know, like, why would they blow up 
um, the, the archive. Like, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, after they blow up an archive, all the captains and the first officers, boom! Now there's an attack. And it's like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, who didn't see this coming? As Kirk is figuring it out, and even just watching the movie, you're like, that's weird. Why would they get all of these important people together in one room that's surrounded by windows? Like, it's, why? Why is this a thing? Uh, watching Pike die was disappointing just because, again, watching the original series and knowing the menagerie and stuff like that, to know what Pike could have been and to see what they do with him in just two movies was really disappointing. The mind meld, like, didn't even make sense. Why is that a thing? Um, they bring up the trans warp beaming technology that Scotty created in the first movie, but then they took it away from him. Oh, okay, make it again. Like, it's just it's just really awkward. And Harrison goes to Kronos, the, the Klingon homeworld, because we can't go there. Why? Like, I don't understand. It's so... Uh, I don't know. And they talk about, like, oh, it's been 100 years since we've seen the Klingons. Okay, so it's been since Enterprise. I, I gotcha. Okay, moving on. Oh, big surprise. London wasn't an archive. It was Section 31. Why? Why does that need to be a thing? You're, again, just like the first movie, you're like, hey, how many references can we cram in here? You don't need it. Stop it. Like, we don't need all of these references. Uh, Carol Wallace, honestly, name one person that knew nothing about, like, who knew about Star Trek. Like, I'm sure anybody who was watching this movie that had never seen Star Trek before, name one Trekkie watching this movie is like, oh, Carol Wallace isn't the daughter of, like, Admiral Marcus? She's not Carol Marcus? Nobody fell for this. Like, oh, it's so bad. Oh, God, I gotta, I gotta take a second. Just give me one second. Like, oh, this movie pissed me off. Okay. The whole, like, Scotty quits because, like, they won't tell him what's in the torpedo bays. No. Nobody buys that. You can clearly tell that Scotty just needed to be off the Enterprise for a different mission because Scotty wouldn't have just quit for no reason. It's it's bad storytelling. It's bad writing. And then the whole like, oh, this is like the Enterprise didn't sign up for military missions. We're explorers. We're not military. No, you're fucking Starfleet. Like you're going to take your orders. Sorry, not sorry. That's the way it goes. Take your orders and go. And I mean, even for the military, like you have your orders. Scotty just can't be like, well, I quit then. Like, I mean, that's not how the military works. Like, it's just, it doesn't even make sense. It's bad writing. Sulu taking over the captain's chair was actually pretty good. Again, it's kind of a reference to Sulu getting his own command later on. But then again, like his like, oh, they're taking the ship from the mud incident last month. Why? 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 Stop making references, especially if we're not going to see Harry Mudd. Stop talking about it. This is why Star Trek needs to be a TV show. The movies don't work. There's too much material. And even if you're going to make a movie, stop making references to stuff that we're not going to see. The people who are like the Trekkies are going to be like, oh, they already saw Harry Mudd? What happened? And the people who don't know anything about Star Trek are like, who the fuck is Harry Mudd? Or who's Mudd? Like, in general. You're just pissing people off or confusing people. Bad writing. Nobody likes it. Stop it. The new Klingons, like, I... Why? Like, okay, I get it. We went from the original series. We went into the motion picture. We got a bigger budget. The, the ridges, the outfits. Okay. We redesigned the Klingons. Cut. Stop. Enterprise made, like, their connection, why they changed the, the physical characteristics. Didn't need to be happened, but it did. Now we have new Klingons. And, I mean, they're not awful, but it was still, like, why did you feel the need to do it? Like, just... If you had, especially one scene, they're only in one scene. If you had just put the regular Klingons in there, nobody would have cared. Like, in fact, all of the Trekkies would have been like, ooh, look at that, they're Klingons. People who knew nothing about Star Trek is like, oh, they're weird looking. 
Instead, you have the, oh, they're weird looking, and why the fuck do they look that way? Why do they have piercings? Like, it doesn't make sense. Stop. Harrison taking them all out. Kirk has 72, 72 torpedoes. Instantly, like, again, the Trekkies are like, uh, really? Is that what this is going to be? Yeah, sure enough. And then Kirk just wailing on Harrison, and nothing happens. Like, he doesn't bleed. He doesn't say stop. He's just, like, sitting there taking it. Like, is that all you got? No, no. We know what you're doing, and nobody likes it. Stop. Ugh. Uh, let's see. God, I have so many notes, and I'm not even halfway through. Like, that's how much I hate this movie. Uh, Scotty on Earth. Okay, fine. The whole drunken conversation. Go look at these coordinates. And then when he's like, oh, like, oh, what does he say? Holy sh... And then they cut. Like, because nobody said shit in Star Trek before? I'm pretty sure they've said it in this movie several times already. So stuff like that. Um, let's see. The, oh, the, the scene where I think it was, I didn't even write it down because it was so bad. I think it was Ohora. No, it was, it was Marcus. It was, um, Carol Marcus is like, oh yeah, you know, Christine Chapel. She transferred to be a nurse. Okay. Great reference to like nurse Chapel. They talked about her in the first movie. She's nurse Chapel in the first movie. You've already made this character and now you're like, oh yeah. You and her had such a bad breakup that she became a nurse. No shit she became a nurse. She was already a nurse. Stop. Watch your own fucking movie before you write the dialogue. Ugh. Stuff like this is pissing me off already. Um, God. Nurse Chapel. Why is Carol in her underwear? Again, to make the nerds horny. I've complained about this all the way since... Mostly Voyager, actually. Like, The Next Generation, not so much. Deep Space Nine, Kira, a little bit. But again, not too much. Voyager is definitely the, let's get rid of Kess, and let's have Seven of Nine, just to give the fanboy something to jerk off to. You know what? The first movie did it, where we saw the Orion Slave Girl, and now for this one, where even Carol's like, why are you looking at me? I'm in my underwear. Stop it. Okay, stop it. We don't need the sex appeal. Like at least Voyager, or no, I'm sorry, Enterprise. Enterprise actually did a pretty good mixture of seeing like females in their underwear and men in their underwear. Like how many episodes did we see Trip running around the ship in just his blue like boxer briefs? Like this doesn't do anything. Because it's just to get the fanboys excited. Stop everything about this movie. Stop it. The pregnant Gorn, why did that need to be a shout out? They've, the, the Cairo, the, they've been cryogenically frozen for 300 years. <clears throat> for one, okay, so now we get it. We know who you are. But still, like, it's why, what's going on? Why does this need to be a thing? And then sure enough, they found me after the Vulcan destruction. Okay, so you're you're going your own route. They they only found you because Vulcan was destroyed and they like started doing a deep search of the galaxy. I can buy that. I'm fine with that. They did not mention the Botany Bay. And to be I love Benedict Cumberbatch. His whole like my name is Khan. No! Just say your name, like, and give your full name. Like, why well, didn't even give his full name? <coughs> like, my name is Khan. Oh, okay, that's cool. Like, they didn't bring up the Botany Bay. You're already doing a disservice to Khan. Bring up the Botany Bay. Everybody loves the Botany Bay. Nobody can even say the name Botany Bay without thinking of Chekhov, like, looking at the seatbelt, like, Botany Bay. Mention the fucking ship. Okay, done. Why, like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to have a Mean Girls reference here, but why are you white? Like, I love Benedict Cumberbatch, great actor. Let's see, um, Ricardo Monteblan was Hispanic. Khan was technically from India, but like, okay, fine, we'll take that for what it is. It was the original series, it was the 60s, the episode Space Seed, and then even the Wrath of Khan. Ricardo Monteblan 
is a Hispanic actor. Why did you not cast a Hispanic actor to play Khan? Why cast a white British guy? Like, that bugs the shit out of me. Like, that's who Khan is. And that's the whole thing, is the eugenics wars, 1998, long before the Kelvin timeline. Like, that's the, the whole thing, is Enterprise was not affected by this Kelvin timeline. Technically, the eugenics wars, not affected by the Kelvin timeline change. Khan should have still have been played by a Hispanic actor. That alone pisses me off to no end. Like, they did a disservice not having a good Hispanic actor in this role instead of just giving it to Benedict Cumberbatch for no fucking reason. Uh, evidently, I did look it up. Like, type into Google, like, why is Khan white? Like, you can't ask that. Like, evidently, there's a comic book out there, and they did, like... Uh, reconstructive surgery to make him look like Jonathan Hare. No, nobody fucking cares. You don't even talk about it in the movie. So if they had even said that, I mean, it's so like, like, what was it? Ghost in the Shell, where it's um, Scarlett Johansson and like she was an Asian woman and then she like was reconstructed to look white. Like, at least they talked about it. This movie, they don't even reference it. Why are you white? Stop it. Like, be the character, be the con that you're supposed to be. Ugh. So much anger towards this movie. So, Marcus, captain of the, the vengeance. No surprise there. Scotty's on board. Again, no surprise there. Like, I'm so done with this. Now, I saw this movie in theaters with my husband. Now, I have a degree in writing... I have always wanted to be like a successful writer. I don't think that'll ever happen, but whatever. It's a good dream. Foreshadow is an extremely important thing to me. Like, I absolutely love foreshadow. I think it's a dying art. One of the big references <clears throat> that I always use is the, the Transformers movie. I understand people don't see Transformers for like the great storytelling, but I think it's the third movie like in the opening sequence where like they're watching TV and Star Trek pops up and the little the little robots like oh I've seen this one this is the one where Spot goes crazy and kills everybody and I you already know Leonard Nimoy plays one of the Transformers in the movie and I was like I swear to god if Leonard Nimoy's character ends up being a traitor and killing everybody I'm walking out of this theater I walked out of the fucking theater. I was like, no, like that is bad foreshadow. Like that is awful. You should not know that it's foreshadow. You should just see it, understand it. And then when the big like change happens, be like, oh, that makes sense. So my husband and I are watching this movie and like they're, they're doing, um, they're going through everything. And as Kirk is talking, he stops mid fucking sentence looks over to to bones and is like bones why are you putting con's blood in a dead tribble and he's like oh, i'm just trying to see what'll happen and i swear to god my husband who has not seen a single fucking episode of star trek leans over and is like is somebody gonna die and they're gonna revive him with con's blood and i was like oh my god why are we still watching this movie? Like, this is the moment. I was like, let's go. Fuck this movie. I'm done. He's like, no, no, no. We paid for these tickets. Let's watch it. I was like, no, you should not know that. Because even I can, like, tell where this movie's going. And I was like, you should not know that. And it's bad foreshadow. It's bad writing. And it's lazy. Absolutely hate it. I'm getting pissed off again. I need another drink. Okay. So... Um, the whole scene with Kirk and Khan, like, jumping from the Enterprise to the Vengeance was actually pretty good. Like, it was a badass scene, them, like, flying around, whatever, one scene, you're good. And I'll admit it, like, again, the visuals are great. The storytelling is what pisses me about this off about this movie. Them bringing in, uh, Nimoy... We see Spock Prime again. Now, that now makes Leonard Nimoy to be in the, the original series. He's been in the most movies. This is the 12th movie. He's done more movies than anybody else. 
So that's kind of cool. And I loved his scene. Like, again, it's something about Leonard Nimoy where he's like, uh, like Zachary Quinto Spock is like, did you ever encounter Khan? And Spock is like, I told you, you have to follow your own path. That being said, he is the most dangerous adversary we have ever faced. And I was like, oh my God, like Leonard Nimoy is amazing. I fangirled, I was, I'll admit it, because he has that charisma. He has that presence about him that like nobody else in this movie does. And even when he's like, we defeated him at a great cost, I was like, fuck, why are they doing this again? Uh, what is it? Bones reference to I'm a doctor, not a torpedo technician. Oh, I, yeah, you're funny. I get it. Uh, the one thing I did like about it is, like, if they had recast Khan, like, Khan is much more of a badass in this movie than we ever actually saw him in the original series. And even in the the Wrath of Khan, like, where he picks up Chekhov and he's like, I have five times your strength. Like, the scene where he crushes Marcus's head... Like, I was in shock. Like, I was like, damn. Like, it was hard. And, like, he, like, breaks Carol's leg. Like, I was like, that's con. Like, I dig it. I like it. Why are you white still? So, stuff like that. Um, Like, the blowing up the torpedoes to save the crew. Or to blow... He was blowing up the torpedoes. I didn't buy it. Like, nobody knew. And then when he's like, I'm not heartless. The crew's over there. I was like, oh, what a shock. Um, the seat belts were kind of a great shout out to like Nemesis actually. So like, which, I mean, when you have a good shout out to Nemesis, like that shows how bad your movie is. Um, I did like the ships rotating, but they didn't have gravity. So as they're rotating, like they have to jump over the doorways and stuff like that. It looked good, but why? Like, where is their gravity even coming? If there's no gravity, they should just be floating. Like, clearly there's gravity somewhere, so didn't quite make sense to me. And then, of course, we get to, like, the core needs to be realigned, and there's radiation, and I was like, don't do it, don't you fucking do it. And sure enough, like, the last quarter of this movie is just a fucking remake. Like, why? Why does this need to be a thing? <clears throat> so, like, oh, fuck, where is it? I have so many goddamn notes. Um... The, the the radiation where like and scotty's like we can't go in there the radiation will flood everything and kirk just decks him in the face well i mean you can't do the vulcan neck pinch like spock did the first time so i guess you'll just have to do it the hard way i did like the, the the whole below the cloud line it looked great to watch the ship drop and then come back up who was surprised like is there a single fucking person out there that was like a oh my god they're gonna die oh okay they're good now no you didn't fool anybody every single person watching this movie was like a, okay now wait for them to come back oh yep there they are if you know if everybody knows what's gonna happen it's not a surprise and it does doesn't need to be in there if you have a sentence that's like 20 words long it doesn't need to be in there less is more we don't need it <clears throat> fuck i'm so pissed off right now like just doing this review is pissing me off oh so like uh scotty calls spock and he's like you better get down here you better hurry and it's like it's basically and nobody can replace james duhan i love simon Pegg. nobody can do the duhan where he's like captain he's dead already like, it's great. And then, sure enough, like, where he yells, like, God! No. Like, you're not William Shatner. Like, stop. Like, why are you recreating a movie? What worked about The Wrath of Khan is, for one, they did three seasons of a show together and two movies. Like, they had already known each other for years. You guys have done two fucking movies together. You're not best friends. Stop it. Stop pretending that you're best friends. Stop pretending that you're emotionally outraged. Like, you've shown more outrage that Khan killed Spock. No, that Khan killed Kirk than you did when your own mom died. Stop it. Nobody believes you. So, and this is now the second time Kirk has died on screen. 
So that makes him, I think, the most deaths now. Because we saw William Shatner, and now we've seen Kirk die. So it's like, oh, okay, fine. We get it. Moving on. The, the crash in the Bay Area. At first, it was very reminiscent of uh, the voyage home. And then, like, way more, like, destruction. And then... I got another drink. This movie's pissing me off. I got a drink again. Did you watch, before you wrote this movie, the first fucking movie? Because evidently you didn't. So, the whole point of uh, Chekhov in the first movie is the scene where Kirk and Sulu are falling. And they're like, we can't beam them. They're moving. And Chekhov's like, I can do it. And he runs through the ship yelling, I can do it. I can do it. And he runs into the teleporter pad <clears throat> and he's typing it in and they're coming up to the ground and it's a fantastic like adrenaline moment and he beams them aboard and they land on the teleporter pad <coughs> and Chekhov yells something in Russian that's basically like, holy shit, I did it. Boom. That's, tele that's Chekhov's entire storyline in the first movie right there. Evidently, he can't do it again. It was a one-time thing. And even at this point, like... Oh no, Khan is moving, so we can't beam him up. But you know what? This car he's on, we can put somebody on the car. What fucking sense does that make? Like, I'm so angry at this movie. Like, it just, ugh. Why? So you can't pick him up because he's moving on a car. But you can put Spock on the same car that's moving. No. That's not how that works. Stop. Uh, him resisting the Vulcan neck pinch was actually pretty badass. I dig that. I could actually see Khan resisting it. I get it. And then, like, the whole, like, they keep moving so they can't get a lock. Stop it again. So, and then we see, like, uh, Spock, like, running. So, I'm um, okay, sorry, I mixed that up. My bad. Khan, they can't, they can't pick Khan up, so they put uh, Spock down. He chases him, but then they put Ohora on the same car. I mixed it up a little bit. I apologize. Same fucking process, though. Like, Kirk, or no, I'm sorry, Spock and Khan are just beating the shit out of each other, but they can put Ohora on the car. Stop it. I don't get it. Now, this is the part that, again, frustrates the shit out of me because... So, Kirk is dead. Can't do anything. He is dead. Now, we need Khan's blood to revive Kirk. Holy shit, the Tribble came back to life. And this is where my husband's like, hey, look at that. And I was like, you shouldn't know that. Stop it. So, okay, Khan's blood's magic, and it can make people come back to life. So, we need Khan alive. Okay, and that's why Ahura goes down there, because we need Khan alive. You have 72 other superhuman augments on board. Why the fuck do you need Khan alive? Just walk down to the cargo bay, grab one of the 72 people that are down there. Oh, there's some of your blood, and now I can revive Kirk. You don't need Khan's blood. Like, did you just forget you have 72 fucking people sleeping in your cargo bay? How do you do that? Ugh, so angry. And so, finally, like, that's it. That's the end of the movie. They revive Kirk. Now we hear Chris Pine do the intro, and they get to go into space for five years, which presumably brings us back to the original series. Why is that the original series? I mean, you already made reference to Harry Mudd, we didn't encounter Harry Mudd until they were in the five-year mission. I just... Ugh. Everything about this movie pissed me off. Like, I absolutely hated it. Out of 12 movies, easily my least favorite movie. Easily. Without a doubt. Like, everything about this. The writing was awful. The storytelling was awful. Like, the cast? I mean... Everybody in it was great actors. I loved the actors. I love Benedict Cumberbatch. He's fantastic. He was miscast. He shouldn't have been in this. Like, everything about it just pissed me off. And you know what? I watched this, and then I sat down, and I took a break for a while, and then just talking about this movie 
pisses me off. Like it makes me so angry to watch this movie because this isn't Star Trek. This is like some guy who got like super wasted and was like, hey, what if this happened? No, like this is not Star Trek. This is awful. And I just, I don't like it. It's, it's, it's so painfully bad for me. Like I would never rewatch this if it wasn't for these reviews. So I don't know, for those who have seen it, like what did you guys think? Am I way too harsh on it? Am I like, is this just me like being like in a bad mood? Go ahead, let me know what you guys think. Let's have a discussion about it. Thank you guys for watching and listening to me rant for a half hour. And I will see you guys for the next movie, the last movie, thank God, for in the Kelvin trilogy. Although, I don't know, Today is November 20th, 2019. Rumor is they got a director for the fourth Kelvin movie. They've said that for years. So I'm not going to believe it until I actually see like a trailer. But I don't know. At this point for the Kelvin trilogy, the last movie, I will see you guys next time for Star Trek Beyond.